Thank you for having me and uh, for letting me present our lab. Uh, last of the companies here, so I, I hope it's presenting or the best for last. Our lab is uh, uh, focusing on Parkinson's disease, and we dare to say that we have the world-leading portfolio of Parkinson drugs, um, and we are aiming to reduce the burden uh, for the people living with Parkinson's. We also had a disclaimer, as you saw. So why are we doing this? Well. There are more than 10 million people in the world having Parkinson's today, and it's expected to double within 10 to 15 years. So uh, it's a huge societal problem. Uh, Parkinson's is a lifelong disease, and uh, so far there are no treatments for it. Uh, so it's uh, lacking effective drugs. Uh, so what we're trying to do is to find drugs that improve the lives with those living with Parkinson's. And the way we do that is with our super uh, scientists that's rooted in uh, uh, the laboratories of Arvid Carlsson, who won the Nobel Prize in uh, the year 2000. And we also have a proprietary platform using phenotypic screening to find molecules that we believe that no one else can find, which are efficacious and safe. And uh, this means also that the costs for developing these drugs will become lower than with other kind of uh, discovery. So the portfolio, we have two lead compounds. The first one is mestopetam. It's developed uh, aiming at uh, LIDS, levodopa-induced dyskinesia in Parkinson's disease. Levodopa-induced dyskinesia is something that uh, occurs after like five to seven years of treatment with levodopa. And basically all Parkinson patients get levodopa as their treatment for the hallmark symptoms, the uh, slowness of movement, the stiffness and the tremor that we usually think of when we think of Parkinson's. Here we had results from a phase 2b study earlier this year. There are also many possibilities to increase uh, or to expand indications in mestopetam. The other lead compound is piripamat. Uh, that is aimed at falls and fall frequency, and also the fear of falling, because if you, if you think about it, Parkinson patients fall a lot. In the ongoing phase 2b study we have now, we see that patients fall f several times a week. So imagine that you sit in, the, in your couch and you're afraid that you, if you get up, you will fall. That will put, a, put a, a burden or put a constraint on your daily life. So this is ranked as the number one problem by people living with Parkinson's. We also have a preclinical portfolio of three compounds so far. We have IRL757 aiming at apathy. And this is not only Parkinson's, it's also apathy and other neuro neurological uh, indications. And we also have IRL942, which is aimed at cognitive improvement uh, in neurology, which means that it's not only Parkinson's uh, for this indication or this molecule as well. Um, and basically all people, or many people, get a little bit cognitive impairment as they grow older. Last, by, by no means least, we have IRL 1117, which is aimed at the hallmark symptoms of Parkinson's disease, and we hope to have this as the next generation Parkinson's medication, uh, replacing levodopa. And it's not the new formulation or a, a new administration of levodopa, it's a totally new mechanism. So, Parkinson's. Um, well, we have, it is a lifelong, uh, lifelong disease. And when you get diagnosed, it's about in the middle of this picture, you have a few symptoms. And then the symptoms grow and it starts with the motor symptoms and then uh, as time goes by, you add the psychiatric symptoms like psychosis, hallucinations, cognitive impairment, apathy, and so on. And with our compounds, we basically cover most of those symptoms. So uh, 
So we feel that we really have this world-leading portfolio of Parkinson's medications. Speaking a little bit more about mistopatum, it is a D3 antagonist. And uh, we actually found out that this was efficacious. And then after we did that, there has been quite some science showing that D3 receptors are involved in the levodopa-induced dyskinesia. Uh, it's a quite big market, uh, one and a half, two million Parkinson patients at the moment uh, that has LIDs. And this will, of course, also double within the next coming 10 to 15 to 20 years. Also, there is possibilities for, uh, for expansion, indication expansion. And the most obvious is uh, psychosis in Parkinson's disease, uh, but also prevention of both uh, psychosis and the LIDs. However, of course, this would need uh, more studies in, uh, in the clinic to be able to prove this, but that is a, is a hypothesis. We had results from a phase 2b study earlier this year. And to conclude, I will not go through this in detail, but to conclude, you can see that we had dose-dependent uh, efficacy or effects in, uh, across the board in every, uh, in every scale that we measured. And uh, those results were significant, and it was also clinically meaningful in the scales that FDA deems appropriate or that they look the most at when, uh, when approving drugs in this indication. We also had uh, quite astonishing results in off time. And uh, the results we show in this study actually matches results that medications have uh, been approved only for, for off. But we are focusing on the lids, but we have the off time as a as an sugar on top. The other important thing in drug development is, of course, the side effects. And uh, happy to say that the safety and tolerability profile was on par with placebo in all um, at all doses. So basically, you don't have to pay anything in side effects for getting the good effects from this uh, from a stop time. So we believe these results are really, 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 really good. Pirepimod uh, falls is something that happens to people with Parkinson. It has to do with the, uh, the disease in the brain. Uh, so ba basically half of the Parkinson patients fall recurrently, which means several times a month. And by falls, we mean falling to the ground. It's not just losing your balance, it's falling. And it, it incurs, of course, huge cost for society uh, to take care of all these fall injuries. So uh, it is very important. We are currently in the middle of a phase 2b study. We expect, uh, or we, we now uh, think that recruitment will go into Q1 next year and we're aiming to report top-line results in during, next, during the first half of next year. So, the preclinical project, as I said before, 757 for apathy. Uh, we have 942 for the improvement of cognitive function, and we have 1117 for uh, the hallmark symptoms. And the, the important thing here is that it's a once daily, so you just have to take it once a day, it's oral, so you just, it's a pill or a capsule, and uh, it, uh, the effect lasts for a long time. That's not, the, uh, that's not how current medication works. Levodopa, for example, you can have, uh, you, you could need to have, take levodopa up to eight or ten times a day. Um, so we believe that this has great potential as if, if the things that we see in the pre clinical settings uh, can re be reproduced in the clinic. Our key priorities, uh, we have an upcoming f end of phase two meeting with FDA with mesdopatam and we're currently focusing a lot on putting together a briefing book to the FDA. In the Pyrupmod study, we're focusing on, on getting the patients in. And in the preclinical assets, we are 
uh, trying to finalize the uh, toxicological studies and the other things that's needed for applying for phase one. So, to conclude, we see a lot of possibilities for high value creation in the next year or year and a half with a lot of inflection points uh, to look forward to. Thank you. Thank you. So, starting with um, a broader look at Parkinson's, you said that there's a lack of drugs, lack of treatment for Parkinson's disease. Why is it proving so difficult to treat this disease? Well, that is, I'm CFO, sorry, to, uh, probably because not enough money has been spent. Uh, <laughs> That's always your answer, no? <laughs> uh, um, on a serious note, I, I don't really, I don't know. So. Uh, uh, you would have to ask uh, my, my colleagues, my science, scientist colleagues. But it's definitely a field where there's a huge unmet medical need. It is. And uh, for example, the 1117 that we just not recently discovered, but that we have started to develop now, it is the first D1, D2 uh, agonist that the biotech society has searched for such a molecule for 50 or 60 years, because it's a problem that it doesn't survive in the brain normally. But it seems like our molecule actually survives and uh, have good efficacy and long-term effects. So the problem is simply the brain is a difficult environment maybe to, to treat? Yes, probably. We also have a question about whether or not outlicensing, outlicensing is still an option for mesodopatam, and if not, how are you planning to fund the phase three study? Outlicensing or business development is absolutely a priority for us in Mestopetam. So uh, that is a top priority for our lab at the moment. Uh, and as you uh, point, if we were not to license it, we would have to fund it, of course. Right. Uh, what uh, kind of traction have your business development activities had so far? Um, We've heard from several experts that investors are focused on late stage projects at the moment. Yes, but a, a compound that is almost in phase three or phase three ready from all technical aspects, uh, I would say that is quite late stage. Uh, and I'm, I'm not able to, to share any details from the BD, uh, of, of course, um, but, but we're confident. What kind of expertise or experience have uh, or do Clintrex and Pro Pharma add to support your regulatory strategy and preparations for the for the phase three? Are you all set? If you could elaborate a little bit on that. Uh, I don't think that we're all set, but they are contributing extremely much. Uh, having good American consultants helping us and uh, is. Uh, it's really, really helpful. It couldn't be done without good experts from them. And we're really happy that uh, PPG or Proforma Group uh, has chosen to work with us. And uh, also that Clintrex with Carl Keyberts, for example, and his colleagues, uh, they are uh, very, very good KULs in the field and knows everything about how the regulatory pathways works uh, within the FDA and how to get a compound like mistopatom or our ad other drugs uh, approved finally. So they are key to your, your strategy on the US market? Yes, they are, absolutely. As a final question then, how do you envision AirLab's position in the market to evolve over the next couple of years? Well, I mean, we, we have five compounds which are totally independent from each other. Uh, and uh, we have a platform which can produce more compounds going forward. So uh, we're aiming to be to, to build on that uh, and to be successful within the last next couple of years. So an ever stronger position. <laughs> exactly. To be the I should probably say to be the leading pharmacology company in Sweden or mm -hmm. the world universe. Well, on, on that note, hope you remember that Victor said that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Victor, for the presentation. Thank you for being here. <laughs>